Hi, I'm Dr. Nick DePapa at Southeast Veterinary Neurology here in Miami, and today we're going to be talking about brain tumors in cats. A tumor is a mass of abnormal cells that affects healthy tissue as it grows. A tumor in the brain will damage or compress the normal brain tissue, leading to serious neurologic symptoms. Tumors that develop in the brain itself are called primary brain tumors. There are three common types of brain tumors in cats. The most common of these, accounting for three out of four brain tumors in cats, are called meningiomas. Originating in the meninges, or the coverings of the brain, they are considered benign as they grow slowly and are not likely to spread to other parts of the body. However, if left untreated, they will eventually prove fatal. The good news is that meningiomas are the easiest type of tumor to surgically remove, and typically surgery offers the best possible outcome. Lymphoma, on the other hand, is unfortunately malignant, and it grows quickly and often spreads to other parts of the body. These tumors originate from lymphoid cells, which are the specialized cells of the immune system. And finally, pituitary tumors originate in the pituitary gland at the base of the brain, which is responsible for many of a cat's hormonal functions. Although these tumors are slowly growing, they are located in the deepest part of the brain, making them difficult to reach surgically. Radiation treatment is the treatment of choice for most pituitary tumors. Primary brain tumors are typically diagnosed in cats over 10 years of age. The most common indication of a brain tumor in cats is seizures, but symptoms can vary depending on where the tumor is located within the brain. Signs of tumors in the front part of the brain include seizures, walking in circles, blindness, and behavioral changes. Signs of tumors in the back part of the brain include a wobbly or incoordinated gait, head tilt, abnormal darting movements of the eyes, and weakness of the limbs. Like most tumors, we do not know specifically what causes brain tumors in cats, but both genetic and environmental factors are thought to contribute to cancer development. While it is possible for any cat to develop cancer, older male cats seem to have a slightly higher risk of developing meningiomas. Many brain tumors can be difficult to detect without proper testing, in part because they can display similar symptoms to many other conditions, including ear infections and even eye problems. High field MRI is the best tool for diagnosing brain tumors. It allows a veterinary neurologist to clearly view the location, shape, and size of a tumor, providing a much better idea of what kind of tumor it is and how to best care for it. In some cases, blood work, chest x-rays, and an abdominal ultrasound are also recommended because of the potential for a brain tumor to spread to other parts of the body. While the diagnosis of a brain tumor might come as a shock, there are treatment options available, including medications, surgery, radiation therapy. Surgery performed by an experienced veterinary neurologist can be used to remove some or all of a tumor, while medications and radiation therapy are used to try to shrink tumors and slow their growth. It's worth noting that cancer treatments are actually much better tolerated in animals than in people. Another option is palliative care, using medications alone to help maintain quality of life for as long as possible. Cats with brain tumors require ongoing care from a veterinary neurologist. Prognosis is variable depending on the type and location of the tumor, as well as how early it is diagnosed and what treatment options are selected. It is possible for treatment to increase the life expectancy associated with a primary brain tumor to several years compared to weeks or months with palliative care alone. As with any cancer, the earlier it is diagnosed, the better the chances that treatment will be successful. If you suspect your cat may have a brain tumor, visit with a veterinary neurologist as soon as possible to discuss options for diagnosis and treatment.